Don Milan in the building. <laughs> All right, so first I want to say thank you for coming in and sitting down with the Lockout Men today to share your story with us. A uh, very interesting concept you got going on. Um, you 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 hit me up in the uh, in the Gmail. He was like, "Hold on, I I, I got a story to tell." I'm like, yeah. what's your, I'm like, "What's your story?" And you 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 came right out with it. Like, I could not work for a mega carrier with a record. I got my CDL for nothing. Wow. For nothing. For nothing. So, so Don Milan, go ahead and uh, tell us your story. What's what's going on? Well, my name, as you said, is it's really Milan or Don, but Don Milan, however we're going to put it out there. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm like 28 years old. Um, I, I'm new to trucking. I'm only like five months in. But I do have some transportation uh, experience. I was a driver for, like, um, the city transit um, since uh, 2019. So I've been having my CDL for a, a, a couple of years. Um, so, and that, you know, working for, like, the city, you only need, like, a class B. Um, so I kind of been, I kind of realized doing that, that it was a lot of money in the transportation industry. So I've been over, you know, kind of looking at being a truck driver, but I was like, okay, I'm comfortable driving these buses. And then, you know, I kind of figured out after some time, I'm kind of getting bored with that, that I maybe should try to, you know, become a truck driver. Because I, I, I was looking at it like, okay, I don't have to deal with people. Sometimes, you know, driving trucks, I mean, buses, people, you know, get on your nerves a little bit because, you know, you pick up just anybody. And I was, you know, also saying, like, maybe I shouldn't, I should try to be a truck driver because I wouldn't have to stop as often, you know. And I've just seen a lot of what I thought was a lot of benefits in the industry just looking from the outside in. So that's pretty much where I started. What happened afterwards? Uh, you you went and got your uh-huh. license, but you had some issues that, that came about. Tell tell us about that. Yeah. So what happened was, um, I did have a CDLB license, and my CDLB license, I've been had like like I said, I had it when I was in, uh, working for City Transit. Um, I had already had that, and um, when I got my CDLB license, I had um, I knew that I wanted to get the CDLA, so mine was supposed to be a upgrade, and I'm in Texas, so. Texas is like you got to take like one test, I think like the combination test, and it's supposed to like set you up to and take the road test, of course. Like, but then I know with the new thing that they uh implemented with the, the February seventh date, they wanted you to go to school. So I kind of had said, okay, I'm gonna have to eventually leave work city transit, and then I have to go ahead and uh go to a school. So I, I knew it was going to be like a car change. I'm like, okay, I'll just get to it when I get to it. So, so what ended up happening, I was dating this guy who's incarcerated. And, um, but before he incarcerated, I was this guy. You know, we, we got into it, just a relationship situation. Uh, we're arguing. Fidelity was one of the issues. And um, he had a police on me. Okay, um, and when he caught the police on me, like the day we got into it, is because I pulled up to where he was, and we was just I was just telling him like, hey, you know, I caught him cheating. I'm like, you know, I'm done with you for real this time. Like, leave me alone. Do not call me. And I, I basically just wanted to kind of create a scene, but make sure he really knew that it was over. So I ended up going home that night. You know, I was upset. I kind of did. He was in the side chick's car at that point. I had all the papers out, but I didn't never like assault him, hurt him, or anything. I basically made a scene. I think he was in, at a, like a, a drug class or something. So I went home, I blocked him, I put it behind me. A couple months later, he ended up, you know, missing me or whatever, trying to be back with me, and I decided to give it a chance. Stupid, I know. Um, but I thought that he was sincere, and I thought he kind of realized what he had done. And 
what what I was thinking. I, you know, I was a little younger than I am now. I was at 26 at the time this happened. Don Corleone, I need a man who has powerful friends. I need a million dollars in cash. I need Don Corleone, those politicians that you carry in your pocket, like so many nickels and dimes. Giving the boyfriend a second chance because, I, like I said, I thought that it was a couple of months he like he wanted to be back with me, and what ended up happening, we ended up, you know, kind of trying to get it together, but taking it slow. I really didn't trust him. So basically, one night we was out, he asked me to pick him up, and um, mind you, I had I was still at the job, the the city transit job. And I took a break because at that time, I was really thinking, that let me go ahead and try to do this truck driving thing. Like, so I just took like a leave of absence, but I quit. Long story short, what ended up happening is we were out because he asked me to pick him, pick him up. And he was driving. He ended up getting pulled over. Okay? So he ended up getting pulled over. And the police, he did have like drugs in the car. I'm not going to lie. I kind of knew his lifestyle. And I kind of dreaded one day that this could happen, that... He got pulled over and it was drugs in the car. Uh, I, I found out at the time that he also had a, like a gun. And um, in Texas, it's legal, but he was not supposed to have a T at the previous uh, problems with, you know, the law. So he was a felon. He was not supposed to have that. Um, so they had pulled him out the car. I knew that situation. I was so, so nervous when it happened. I've never been in trouble. And I was kind of like seeing the situation from the past. And, um, I think they had, they smelled the drug, so they kind of had a pretty, the officers had a pretty good idea of what they were going to do. They did ask me for my license because I was, um, I was, I was in a rental car at the time because my car was also in the shop. That's another thing that had happened. My car was in the shop, so I had got me in the rental. So they, the rental was in my name. They was asking me about the actual car. So I gave them my driver's license. I'm thinking, you know, I'm good. Like, I've never been in trouble. But I am worried about, you know, the drugs and just the fact that I'm in the car with him. I'm just, like, you know, nervous, so, so nervous. Like, just thinking about what happened. It's like it just happened. Um, anywho, but I'm thinking overall, like, I'm nervous for the situation, but I'm, like, I'm good. Like, God has blessed me. I'm going to get out of this situation somehow. He come back. The officer come back to the car. He go run my license. He comes back to the car, and he says, oh, you know, you got a warrant, right? I'm, like, a warrant? Um, no. I said, I don't have a warrant. And he says, for aggravated assault. When I tell you, like, out, I was, like, my stomach <laughs> was in my butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was crazy. I'm like, and I looked over. I'm like, he, the dude told, like, it was him. He called the police on me. He actually did call the police on me. And then when I tell you, because they didn't, they was like, we can't tell you much, but yes, you have assault. They didn't even tell me that it was him that did it. So, mind you, I'm in the car with my ex-boyfriend that's acting like he's trying to be with me that did not tell me that he called the police successfully. It actually did call the police on me, and I had a warrant for my arrest. Not a regular warrant, an aggravated assault, which is just terrible. And guess what? I didn't have just one. I had two. Because an a incident after that actual night happened to where after I was already butthurt, somebody slashed my tires. And I also had went to confront him and be like, hey, so you're going to cheat on me? And I'm guessing the girl he was cheating on me slashed my tires. Or maybe he did it. I don't know no more. And I'm like, you're going to cheat on me? Then you're going to try to, you know, I got to go to work. Then you go going to try to mess with my money, mess with my way around. Like, I shouldn't have had nothing to do with this guy. Like, just with everything, even to this day, I still don't know what ended up happening. So, anyway, I ended up getting arrested. Ended up calling my family. I was in tears, crying. It's my first time ever been in trouble. But even then, I'm like, okay, well, we back together. Like, this can't be how my life in the end. I, I was in the military. Like, I did everything right. Like, I had everything right as far as I was concerned. I never did drugs. I, I like, I'm thinking I hit everything right. I even lost my virginity at 19. I was a grown adult. I'm thinking this don't happen to me. This happened to other people. And I'll never, ever do that again. Like, that's why even to this day, I, I just never say never. But that whole situation is like, I just couldn't believe that that was, I was in it. Mind you, when all this is happening, when we're getting booked in, because we go to jail together, he still, I still, I'm like, you, you actually called the police on me? 
he he was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Long story short, fast forward to me getting out because my family was able to get me out. Everybody was in full support of me. I'm just so grateful for my support system, my sister. Just, uh, I don't know what I would do without them. They got me out of jail, and now the time, the clock begins. That's when I start finding out what goes on to someone, what happens to someone when they're out on bond, okay? So now, mind you, I ain't got no job because now that leave of absence will turn into me having a pending charge against me that would make me have to leave my job because they're not going to deal with the courts and all the stuff I'm going to have to go through. So now I'm losing my job. I'm losing a lot. I didn't know how much I was losing. I had an apartment. I didn't have a car because I had a rental car at the time. So it's like I'm I'm just going through a lot. Like I just got a, got out of jail. I have no employment. So now I'm looking for jobs. Okay? And you know truck driving, I ain't going to lie. I done heard like even before I was planning on going into this industry, I was thinking that, oh, I know people that got records that drive trucks. Like uh, I was thinking like I didn't think about that for a, mean, uh, a decent amount of time because I was like, okay, I still got this apartment. I still got this lease I'm in. So that whole year had happened. I ain't gonna lie. I just said, okay, put truck driving to the side because I just thought that maybe I could do it, but I'm gonna have to do it at a later time. So, but even at a later time, I, I kind of kept in the back of my mind, I'm like, because I got this rent to pay, I need money now. I can't afford to go to school. So what ended up happening is I had talked to my dad. My dad, um, he'd been driving trucks and he was um he was on parole, but um he had just completed his parole that he did eleven years successfully on. And he was like, Well, you can still drive trucks, um, even though you would have a record. But he said in your case you you just got on So I received thirty percent for finance, political influence and legal protection. That's what you're telling. That's right. Why do you come to me? Why do I deserve this generosity? If you consider a million dollars in cash, just finance. Desalu, I'm calling you. Yes, yes, because now I'm out of jail. Now I got this apartment that I'm in a lease. Uh, or I have to uh pay. Um, I got a lease, <laughs> and but I ain't got no car. I don't have any car. Uh, but I'm like, I still need to need to make money. So I'm not going to lie. I kind of prejudge what I guess people with criminal record, uh, records went through. Because mind you, I was just working for the city. And um, I was just working for the city. I, I never had a problem with employment. Like I said, I was in the military. Jobs usually hired me quick. So now I'm in this, this newfound situation where I got two aggravated assaults pending against me. But I'm thinking, again... They're back at it. Like, I'm thinking, oh, they ain't convicted, so it don't matter. Do you know I ran a background check and that stuff showed on me? Like, it showed on me, like, it showed on me the same week. We in Texas now. So I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm just feeling like I just failed in life. Like, I'm just feeling low down. Like, I'm like, bro, and I'm blaming the guy. Like, oh, my God. Like. I've been knowing you for years since, well, I've been knowing him since 2019. And I'm like, bro, all this stuff, like, you know, like, made me catch a criminal record. Everybody been told me to leave you alone. And, you know, I just, I just felt so, like, broken, so lost, so just, like, at the bottom of the barrel. Like, but that's because I had ran a background check on myself to see that I had pen and charge. I hadn't even, I hadn't even applied at a job. So now the search begins because now I need money. Because mind you, when you got a judge, you got to pay bond. Like somebody had, my brother had paid for my bond, but I had, when I went to jail, I had money on me. Like I had like $800 in my pocket. Um, I had some money on me. I, and it's crazy because I would have never thought to have cash on me, but I did. And um, I was able to use some of I had my sister come get my money. I was able to bond, help bond myself out. Help bond myself out. Um, and long story short, like when that happened, I was trying to find me a job, and I had I was able to get a job. So it is jobs out here that will hire you pen and charges, uh, but they're not the best job. It's like bad jobs, like jobs that like dark web jobs, like jobs that you don't want, you know. And um, like again, mind you, I'm 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 somebody that never had a problem with a job, you know. Out of me and him. I always got what I want. I had a family, I had a support system, people that loved me. I mean, he had people that loved him, but obviously not enough to keep him out of 
criminal activity. Like, I just, I was raised, my auntie was in the Air Force, like my dad, he had been through that situation, being in trouble, but he had changed his life. Like I said, he was a Trump driver. But my first real flag for the being the fact that my dad was holding off while he was on parole. He was on parole for 11 years, but I thought that was by choice. But I, you know, even to this day, I asked him why, but now I'm kind of figuring out why he wasn't able to, you know, I guess work, drive while he was going through that circumstance, you know? And um, so, which brings me to what I what I emailed you about. Um, well, I can't skip that far ahead, actually. So, basically, what ended up happening was I was looking for jobs. I was able to find me some jobs. Not the jobs I want. The jobs, really, they were at warehouses. And I never worked at a warehouse in my life. And I had, you know, hung myself to do what I had to do at the time. I was really lucky and blessed and highly favored because when I tell you, that case, I was they were telling my lawyer was telling me it was no way these aggravated assaults won't go stick on me. I just knew it was old for me. She said, even if he like dropped the charges, it ain't no drop the charges and the family violence. Like it ain't no way, like basically like you just gonna be at the hands of the judge. And I do have a praying family and I you know, I pray myself, I have a, a strong faith myself. I mean, I thought it was over like I mean crazy stuff it entered my head like just suicide and all type of just mentally draining like like mentally my mental was messed up because like again I just felt so like I felt overwhelmed I had this apartment I thought I got to move out my apartment move with my family like fight this case because to me I was innocent I never like hurt him like and like another thing when you when in the state of Texas you don't have to actually put your hands on somebody I didn't actually aggravate assault to me is actually like physically harming them. And I never pushed him. I probably pushed him, but somebody could say, oh, they seen you with a knife in the state of Texas, and that's enough to get a charge. And that's freaking crazy to me. Like, if you don't got no wound, you ain't got no, like, you telling me somebody words is enough to change the course of my life, you know? So, anyhow, like I was saying, like, when that happened, I'm... I'm still thinking about truck driving, but way in the back of my head because I know that I need to go to school. And I now I'm looking at it like, why am I going to get five weeks of bills and responsibilities and paying this bond to to, to go into truck driving school? And then you got to pay for truck driving school. So I was able to get a grant to go to truck driving school. But I'm fast forward and that far because I want to put, I want to let everybody know where, where my, where my, where everything was, I think everything was going through. It was going in the direction where I seen I seen a light at the end of the tunnel. Because I'm like, okay, so it's a grant. And guess what? The grant offers, you can, they, don't, they even take, like, felons. The grant, the government grant actually takes felons for any trade. It could be welding. It could be dri- truck driving. It could be electrician. Like, it's actually grants out there that, even if you have like a criminal record that you convicted of that you can do. So I'm like, okay. So they actually like, I'm looking at it like, okay, so it's grants out there and I don't have to, just because I'm going through the situation, I don't have to not get to my goal. I'm thinking like, okay, it's a light at the end of the tunnel because here I am working at these warehouses, but you telling me I could go get my CDL. Y'all going to pay for it. Why I got pending charges against me. So. Now I'm trying to, you know, sign up. So I'm like, where can I sign up at? So mind you, I, it was a process to get the grant. You know, it was some hoops and stuff. I had to take so many tests and, you know, I had to go to so many places and all this crazy stuff. They do make it a little challenging for you. But when I got to my truck driving school, I went to Continental Truck Driving School in Dallas, Texas. Shout out to them. <laughs> Shout out to him. Uh, I think the dude named Dre, EJ. Um, Charles, uh, um, all them guys over there, man. They just, they just great. It was a lot of people with criminal records in my truck driving school. Okay, it was a lot of people with tra- <laughs> like criminal records. Like one dude said, you know, we were talking before the instructor come in. One dude said he had just got out like two years ago. So again, like this is at the truck driving school. So a lot of us received the same grant. So. You know, we talking, we, you know, trying to see basically who all done been in trouble and stuff. And I'm like, 
I have a pending charge against me, but I ain't been convicted. But I'm just happy this opportunity is available because, man, like, it's the best thing that, that's going. So now I'm in school, you know, going through the pre trip, everything. Mind you, like I said, I had a CDOB. So this stuff, I already have seen this before. So, and then I came to truck driver school with my permit. Once I found out it was a grant to pay for it, I went ahead and got my permit. Because I'm going to have to take one test. So I got my permit. I'm I'm already here in the class because I got my permit. I got my CDLB. They like, oh, you just going to see that. Because the week, that first week, everybody was going to get they, having to pass their knowledge and, you know, get their permit. So I'd already had it. I was sitting down thinking this is going to be a cakewalk. So, you know, I'm kind of, I know a little something, so I'm working on my free trip. I'm like, okay, I don't know there's more parts on the truck than it was on that bus and everything in the front, but I still don't know where it's at on this truck. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little, I ain't a lot, that semi truck is a little intimidating. So, when I was on the hood, I was actually surprised at what I had to see. And, you know, it kind of got me a little group of people, and we was all helping each other, and, you know, and uh, I actually put it on my TikTok, but I was like, okay, like, just be finishing off, like, it was such a challenge with all the stuff that, well, not all the stuff in truck driving school, but I went to a manual with truck driving school. They only got manual. So, I was in a situation. So, yes, I was in the car with my ex-boyfriend, and um, he had, he was driving the car. The officers actually said they got him for speeding, but, I mean, I, I, I mean, I... <laughs> The, they didn't, they couldn't even give him a speed. Like I don't think he was speeding. I think that they, because I, I looked at the report, they even said it's a drug infested area. They just had the right person at the right time. And I was in a passenger seat because it was my rental. I ended up, you know, I, the officer asked me for my ID. You know, I, you know, I had a CDLB license and that was my rental and I had insurance on the, the rental. So he seen that I had warrants that my ex boyfriend essentially put on me with his funky, ugh, anyway, uh, that he put on me and did not tell me that he actually did. And what ended up happening with that, the backstory of that was that after you call the police on somebody, you know, you could try to not answer the phone. Whatever you set them up to do is what's going to happen. Even any family violence, anything like that, assault, basically they could pretty much run with it. And that's what ended up happening in my case. Even though I never had a criminal record, never been in trouble, I had charges out for my arrest for aggravated assault. I had two of them. Um, so that's what ended up happening. Uh, I ended up going to jail that night with my ex-boyfriend and my family found out. I had some money on me. My my other, my other brother put some money up with my money, bonded me out. So now I got pending charges against me almost immediately. Once you booked in, that's, that's how the system works. It's updated. It's on your record. It's on your background. So just as quick as that, which is crazy to me, like how how easy it is to get in trouble and hard to get out. But that's what happened. Right there, you 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 was in the car. You and your boyfriend was in the car. I guess y'all was just joy riding and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You guys went through a suspected area, and and the police pulled you over. The car was yours, though. So you said that the, yeah. that your boyfriend had drugs and a gun on him. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. Under the seat. Did did the well? Let me let me see if I can picture the scenario. So they got both of you guys out of the car. They searched the car. No. No. They didn't get. They pulled him out because he got mind you, he on probation already. So they pulled him out. I guess to talk to him. So I guess to get him to admit. Cause they smell marijuana, you know about the whole. I could smell it, you know how they go. Okay, okay. So they pull him out of the car. I'm still in the car. You still in the car? Did they? Yes. When did they come and pull you out of the car to search it? Well, what happened was they wanted to know who was like who rental was it, and it was my rental, so I had the documentation like the insurance. They're like, well, why aren't you driving? I'm like, well, I'm tired. You know, I didn't feel like driving. Again, just a, a passenger, but it's my room, so I'm in the car with him. But again, they smelling this marijuana odor. So and it was a lot. Just to be frank, it was a lot. It wasn't no little gram. It was a lot. Um, and like I say, I, I kind of knew some stuff, but I, you know, that was his lifestyle. I, I always just told him to keep it away from me, but 
I didn't do my due diligence, nor did I basically do what I needed to do by not putting myself in that situation. They got him at the car, and then they ran. I'm still sitting in the car. They asked me for my ID. The other officer was two. They go back there and run mine and then tell me I got a warrant. And then at that point, they pulled me out the car, too. Because at that point, I'm going to jail. They had calls for searching the car because of the marijuana yes. odor. Yes. Uh, did they say that prior to pulling you out of the car? Or they just pulled him out, talked to him, and then come back to you after they ran your license? They they didn't say anything about searching the car until after they pulled you out of the car and, and placed you up under arrest, right? Yes, correct. And that's the thing that I was like, well, look, what it looked like was that they was willing to let me, I mean, the drugs in the car. So, obviously, they was going to try to, well, hold on, I can't even say this because I looked at the report. Basically, they were probably going to take him to jail because the drugs were under behind his seat and the gun was under his seat. In Texas, I don't know if it's in the law, but they say they basically, anything that's close to you as far as like drugs, guns, or whatever, is yours if it's in a certain range of you. And because that gun was under his seat. I said that I would see because I heard that you were a serious man to be treated with respect. Yeah, because that gun was under his seat and them drugs was directly behind the driver's seat, it's his. You see? It's his because it's closest to him. Okay, so the cops, when they searched the car, they pulled out the drugs, they pulled out the gun. Uh, automatically, as you just mentioned, that it was mm -hmm. close to him. So they just pretty much said okay well this is his they didn't come to you at all because you was the you was the owner of the car per se even though it's a rental yes uh they they yes. didn't try to put that on you did they come to you and be like no. hey who's who's gun and whose drugs no. is this they they didn't do that no and that no they did and that's why my father because he had been in trouble for he was like she that would have been all on him that was your room to you because to me it's like you could have act like you didn't know what was going on and and, and you would have been either okay to drive or they probably would have told you that you wanted because you had never been in trouble they see you got a cdl and i ain't gonna lie i done got pulled over with my little cdlb and they say oh you got a cdl they're not gonna give me a speeding ticket like that cdl the cdlb at that time had you know, kind of play uh, a part in a couple of my situations. So to me, I was going to be, I took what made sense, I was going to be able to go while he was going to be violated and in jail. But because he had called the police on me. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I'm a little, I was still a little confused because usually the cops pretty much will put that on you being that that was your car. But did yeah. Any, but you, but the cops, t you, you told the cops that wasn't yours. Did, did you? No, I never, no. <laughs> no, I would never do that. Like, even though, even though that makes sense, even my dad, like everybody was talking about, they're like, you bet not have said, said that was yours or anything. No, I was no, like, no, you no, know. No, 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 what I'm saying is, no, what, I, what I'm saying is the cops asked you if it was yours. You said no, right? Oh, they never asked me if it was mine. They just wrote it up as his because of where it was located. They never asked me. They just asked me about the, the assault. They was like, oh, you got assault. And I was, again, clueless. So they didn't ask me anything. They didn't question me. Did the, I'm still shocked about me. Did, did, they, did they question the boyfriend? I mean, did, did, he try, yeah. Yeah. Did, did he try to pass the buck or whatever the case? You know, like that, I don't know. But remember I told you they pulled him out the car? When he was he was in the driver's seat, they pulled him out the car? While he was out the car, I don't know what the conversation they was having. I was still sitting, and that's when another officer walked up to me. Right, but they didn't you see? know. So, but, they didn't, but when they pulled him out of the car, they didn't know about the additional drugs and the gun in the car until after they got no, you out of the car. No, exactly. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah. So once I had the warrant and I was at the car, here go the drug bus. Here go the gun. I get what you're saying now. Yeah. So they smelled it. 
But until I was at the car, that's when they searched it. Because when I got at the car, they found you, the other officers too, opened the door and the drugs was in the back seat. And then, now I'm at the car. I'm the owner of the car. The car is getting towed. We at the racetrack. The car is gone. The car, the rental car is going to the, you know, the rental car. People don't have to pick it up. Like, it's under the seat. The next car is under the seat. When he finds the gun, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But it's all under his seat. So the boyfriend in the back of the car with you, both of y'all in the back seat of the car, the boyfriend is not trying to pass the buck off, though, right? No, no, because he, right now, you know what? And that's the thing. And I, I, I'm, I'm a, I don't know what's wrong with me because I felt so bad for him because when I was in the back of the police car, he was like, be quiet. I don't say that thing. Because mine still confused. Like, you actually called the police on me like, what the hell is going on? Because I, I didn't know that he actually pressed charges or did whatever he did or whatever happened. You know, I'm still like lost and confused. So well, I'm trying to have a conversation with him. But he know, I guess he know the process. He's telling me, don't talk, don't say nothing. You know, like, you need to, we're not doing this here. So okay. he not, yeah, he not speaking to me. But once I seen him put the bag on top of the car, the police car, and then I see the, with the gun, I'm putting it in evidence bag, I already knew, you know. And he was just, because mind you, he on the probation, so he know he going to jail. And mind you, this ain't his first time going to jail while he was on probation. I actually spent thousands of dollars to get him out of jail before. So now I'm in the same situation as him. So you see, like, it's just a bad situation all, all around. The car situation, the boyfriend situation. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're in jail. You did your stint. You got out. Uh, now you <laughs> I have, did four days. Now, <laughs> now you have uh, charges pending you, you have uh you have the assault charge because of uh what happened between you and your boyfriend prior to getting in the car situation and now you're trying now you're trying to uh now you're trying to uh get a job in trucking so fast forward to that how yeah. how did that how did that affect you uh, now uh, trying to get a job in trucking because you got those charges <laughs> pending on you? Never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. Go on. Yeah, so what ended up happening is, like I said, I've been knowing that trucking was, I thought, <laughs> let me just say that I thought that trucking was feeling friendly. I had um, heard... Um, I had heard a lot of stories about people with felons, felonies getting into trucking. I thought it was like how, you know, I know a lot of people that, that old felons, oh, oh, like so many years since the crime, that had did what they had to do, and now they are truck drivers, and they got all this money, and it's just all good, and, you know? So, mind you, like I said, I was at City Transit with a Class B. I had already planned in the future to go ahead and get my CDOA just to have it, just so I, you know, I could be like the other people saying, okay, well, I got a CDO, I can go anywhere. Because with a CDOB, you limit to, to to buses and, like, city transit and other stuff, like motor coach. But I wanted that I could do anything just like everybody else. So I wanted the Class A. So that was already on my roster to do, but with me working for city transit at the time, I just, I didn't see a, a time to do it. So I hadn't, do, I hadn't did that. So now, yeah, after I'm getting out of jail, now I'm like, okay, I need some money. I got to pay rent. I got to finish my lease out of lease. Um, now I'm not able to get jobs. I'm working like, I was able to get a job, but it wasn't quality jobs like I was used to. It was like the warehouse jobs, like just the, the bottom jobs, like the jobs that nobody shouldn't have to work. The jobs with different races of people that you can't understand. Just low quality stuff that I was not used to. And um, it was a humbling experience, and it really made me realize that, you know, I'm doing something because of what I'm going through. But this is this is somebody's life, you know. Like I'm I'm fighting this charge to aggravated assault, but this was somebody got to do for real in their life. I'm still hoping that this don't be my forever life. But again, my 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 life is my hand my my, my life is in the court's hand. So I'm doing these jobs, and I'm like, let me go ahead and see how I can get into trucking. Because to me, that was 
the get rich quick side of things because you could be a felon. It solved two of my issues. You could be a felon. Even though I wasn't a felon, basically, they, pen and charges treat you like a felon. And if you ever do an application, any job, they ask you, do you got pen and charges? Because basically, that's your circumstance at the time. So, yeah. So you, I need to get into trucking. So you was getting into trucking, but you're not actually a felon, right? Am I, am I yeah. to understand that? That's right. That was a, I was a pending felon. Pending felon, I like it. Okay, but pending how, how, felon. How, the Don, how, how are you a pending felon? You only got charged. You haven't even went to court yet. Man, lock out. Tell me something. The state of Texas is crazy. Like, I never looked up statues, anything. Do you know that I thought that if you're not convicted, you're good? When I tell you, they were saying, oh, unfortunately, you got to wait until this case is resolved to apply with us. Do you know how many doors was closing in my face? Okay, okay, okay. I, I see what you, okay, okay. You're, okay, Crazy. you're not, you're, you're not a felon, but you had, but you had charges that was pending that you have to go to court to settle out before the companies even gave you a chance because the companies Period. the companies didn't know whether or not you was going to be charged if you was going to do a time if you was going to be put yeah. on probation and if you was to be yeah. put on probation could you leave the state with, with your probation yeah. uh stipulations exactly. and if if you wasn't on probation, are you going to go to jail? How long are you going to be in yeah. jail for? What's so, the point yeah. of hiring me? So, yeah, yeah I get, I get that. And I get you now. Okay. I get that. But my thing was, so this is what they should say about the world. Of stuff, really, the state of Texas. I'm ready to get the hell up out of here just because of that experience. It still, you know, gives me PTSD. Um, is you guilty to proven innocent. Okay? Guilty until proven innocent and that's all i, I will say about the criminal justice system it is what it is like i don't make the rules they was here before i was even born in 1995 okay i don't make the rules this is some crap and i hate it all right so fast forward up until the current so what what are your <clears throat> situation right now because it sounds like you're in a truck so what what, well, what, what was the outcome <laughs> So the outcome was uh, grace to God and, you know, my ex-boyfriend with his fraudulent, like we say, he ex. I, I want to, like I said, I know people going to hear this, be like, oh, because I was jail, people saying, oh, and hell, you know, no, why, why would a dude do this? Like, he's so wrong. Like, he know you had everything, your life ahead of you, ex-boyfriend. He did sign a non-affidavit. They kind of helped, but the, my lawyer did tell me I had a public defender again. Look at my financial situation. I wasn't able to afford a lawyer. Um, didn't have a car at the time, and I had to pay rent. Um, so I, I got a court appointed lawyer. The lawyers was trying to charge me ten billion, so I couldn't afford that. So I am in a truck right now. My my life is a three sixty from last year. That was terrible because my charges got dropped in November of last year. My charges ended up getting. Drop. They gave me, they would have not I had two charges, so they just missed one. And then the other one, they put me on three days deferred adjudication. So that 90 days has been up in February of this year, right? So I was successful. My, like I said, I never did drugs. Like I said, I was a square. I never, my, my ex boyfriend and just the guys I've dated in the past was like the most fun I would have had as far as like on the other side. Besides, like, my daddy, but that's my dad. He. I got in trucking. I got into trucking because my cases got dismissed, and I was able to, it in all the shows on my record. So I successfully completed my probation. It got dismissed. So um, I'm now with, I won't say, because I don't like people in my two business, my, too much of my business, the Orange Company, right? I'm with the Orange Company, and um, I was able to get my CDO through, uh, uh, a third party, um, you know, third party trucking school, and I came to the Orange Company, and I've been at the Orange Company since like June. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so yeah. 
Let's go ahead and unpack this a little bit. Okay, so okay. everything that transpired with you, um, all because of the fact that you your your charges was pending and that's what's pretty much holding you back, right? Yes. yes. But but after every but after everything that was said and done, uh, did your lawyer go back to your ex boyfriend and say, "Hey, bro, uh, <laughs> we're going to need you to sign off on this to, so that we can have her life, so she can have her life back," or did you yes. call him up and be like, "Hey, bro, come on now, let's tell the truth." Here. Well, well, what ended up happening, like you said, um, it like it was a lot of inconsistencies. They were trying to figure out. Well, how was she here and how did this happen? And again, it was based off him being upset. So those inconsistencies would have proven a point if I was to go to trial. But like I said, realizing how the criminal justice system was, I didn't want to roll those dice like that. They really did scare me um, and made me feel like I had no chance just because of it looked like a woman is hurt, uh, hurting a man or, you know, just that, that flip of scenario. Um, so yeah, he was calling me the whole time. They said I had a no contact against him. I got over hundreds of calls from him. So he kind of helped my case because they were like, if somebody hurt you, why were you with them the day they got arrested? Why were you calling them so much? Everything that used to happen, I used to send my lawyer. So it kind of helped my, my situation prove that I didn't do these things that were alleged against me. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. I'm glad yeah. that it, I'm I'm glad that everything definitely worked out. I mean this this whole scenario sounds so familiar. And you say you from <laughs> you, you you say you from from Dallas, Texas, Dallas, Texas too. <laughs> it, it sounds so familiar. I mean. It, <laughs> the situation with you kind of mirrored the situation that happened to a to a young lady out in Dubai. Hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but her her, situ- that is. her her situation was a little bit more strenuous than yours. But uh, I I remember seeing that on your channel. I think I know I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, it, I mean, you was. You you was in the car, both of y'all was pulled out, but you you actually had a warrant. Like they they mm-hmm. had they, they had reasons to Yeah. Uh, Cause if I was driving, you. yeah. Right. But you, it was, you yeah. wasn't but you wasn't driving the car, but the car was in your name though, right? Yes it was. Yes it okay, was. Okay. Well, you got your you 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 got your uh, CDLA uh, through a third party. Yes. Was, was that out of pocket or was that a grant? That was a grant. And again, that grant is the reason why I was like thinking that I was going to be able to get into this industry with no issues. Like I could be a driver because this school was allowing me to go with pending criminal charges. And some people that got charges or conviction, sorry, and they're actually truckers or they actually, why are you paying for people to go get CDLs if they're not going to be able to work in this industry or they're going to have to go work for a mom and pop or an owner operator that's going to give them a chance. Like, why aren't you telling these people that they're not going to be able to get on it? None of these mega carriers, because I didn't tell you this lockout, but when I was on pending charges, uh, when I had the three months deferred probation, I was trying to just, I was calling trucking companies and I was telling them my circumstance, like, Oh, I'm dealing with this. They were like, well, um, if you're on three months probation, you got to wait five years from the time of that. I said, I'm on probation. I'm going to be off free and clear. They were saying five years for that. I'm like, well, I ain't even been convicted. I heard five years. I heard nine years. I'm like, so why would they pay for my CDL and I'm not going to even be working? I was frustrated, crying, snot nose, just like, mind you, I was on probation at the time, a three-month probation. I know a girl that was in my truck driving school that had six months. I mean, two years. She had two years. So, so let's make this clear: you, you, you don't have a criminal record. You, you don't have no. I do you, not have a criminal. You free and clear. I, I'm free and clear. I could pass a background check. All right. And a drug test. Uh, and anything you, else. You said and a drug <laughs> test. <laughs> and a drug anything test. Anything else. 
we they want her follicle. It's not as and oh, I about to say my company, the orange company does all of it. They do all of it. You say so. and, a, and a drug test. <laughs> Um, the Don. What what what's the takeaway for you on all of this? What what's the takeaway? Man, the takeaway is be careful who you surround yourself with. Like I don't believe in a wrong, I, wrong place, wrong time has happened, but that was not my circumstance. It literally was like I knew this person, but. Just, I just never, I never would have in a million years would have thought that would have happened to me. I knew that it could happen, like being around him and something, you know, him being in the streets. And, you know, it, I, I thought that maybe he had beef with somebody, a gunshot come blowing through my window or something. Like, I just never knew. But be careful who you surround yourself with. Protect your, to protect your, your, your record. Protect your, the way you get money. Protect your, your, your mental health. Protect yourself. Like, I'm so protective on myself now. Like, like, I don't want anybody around me, which makes trucking. We have those days. I have those days where I'm like a little bit, even from my family, they want me around more, but I'm still traumatized from what I went through last year. So some days I don't want to be bought. You know, um, you know, get your money, you know, make yourself happy. Do stuff alone. Don't be so scared. You know, love yourself more. You know, like I said, like I learned a lot. I still have post traumatic. I ain't gonna lie, cause going to jail kind of let me see another side of life. And I'm so grateful that I was able to get a second chance. I'm so grateful that I'm not stuck working from, you know, a black ops or a dark web company, as I call it. You know, and that my I get to go on. You know, I get to go on. I get to be better. I don't have any children. I don't have like I'm healthy. You know, I try my best to do what I can do. I, I, I give. Like, for me to have that turn out, it would have been very, very bad, you know, for my life to end up like that. So. Well, I appreciate you coming in and sitting down with me and sharing your story, man. Hopefully some people would definitely, if they're in the same situation, hopefully they can yeah. take something away. Uh, definitely knowing that now that, if you got pending charges, especially in Texas, you you, mm -hmm. you might not be able to uh, get that uh, pristine trucking job. At least not yeah. yet anyway. <laughs> not right now. I'm a little worried about this Salozzo fella. I want you to find out what he's got on his fingernails, you know? Go to the uh, Tatalia's... Uh, and uh, make them think that uh, you're not too happy with our family and, and uh, find out what you can. So you and old boy is not together. <laughs> we not together. He No, we not together, but he called me like, I think he know he did me wrong and he, you he, know. He's but trying to make I up wanna, for it. He, but it's, yeah, he is, but to, it's like, a truck driver now like i'm different you know like <laughs> I, I, I go to different places <laughs> he in jail like and now we going through now if he do call me now he called me before i didn't answer and he was like where you at i'm like man i'm in kentucky or like he thinking there's people at the truck stop and you know he just but he's not my dude and i made that very clear but he cannot fathom the girl that was always there for him he got her in trouble she was able to come about that trouble and now she's moved on. Like, that's just too much for him. Yeah, that's too much for him. And I, I like I said, I, I don't talk to him like that. He does still try to reach out to me. He has people calling me. But again, like, it was so much hurt with that situation and PTSD that I kind of just want to leave him in the Big cheese got it locked. Won't you love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Won't you love me real way? Yeah, swim around. Won't you to take it like a G? Yeah, I'm